bevo.com. One of your roles as chairman is to identify the next chief executive. So can you, you're, you're a master at doing that. So what do you look for in a chief executive before you appoint them? Well, I'm not, I'm, I've been a bit lucky. I'm mean, not sure I'm a master. It is a, um, Adam's a classic. You know, I, I, um, I was struggling really to, to find somebody to run the, the Royal Mail. Uh, I had two or three people who I was about to appoint, and then out of the sky came Adam, and, and who I'd not met from Adam, uh, literally from Adam. Um, and you know, he's got all the skills that, that I look for in people. You know, he's he's he, he's he's very straightforward. He's very bright. Uh, he can take all the tough decisions, but at the same time, he's got a you know he, he understands that you know people are really important in terms of the mix, and he can cope with the pressure. And and you know, I, I can remember when I was a CEO, you know, I was first appointed a CEO, and and and. It is the toughest job in the world. It's the best job in the world, I actually think. Running, you know, being a CEO is the best job in the world, but it's the toughest job in the world, and it's the loneliest job in the world because, in the end, the buck really does stop with you, and and so you have to. It takes you a bit of time to realise that, and 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 then when you realise it, you can either cope with it or, or you can't, and and you know that most of them have got those sort of same types of characteristics. Yeah, that's good because I understand one of the first things you did when you appointed Adam Crozier as the chief executive of the Royal Mail is that his first job, you sent him down to go and deliver the mail at 4.30 in the morning at the post office. What, what message were you sending then? The original idea of all this I got from James Dyson. And, um, and one of the reasons I went on the Dyson board actually was um, I was going on holiday once about 15 years ago and, and I thought I'd buy a book to read and I bought James's autobiography, it was actually a very good book. Um, and I didn't know him from Adam and, uh, and then I read in the thing, one of the things he did is everybody who joins Dyson, which is true to this day, on the first day they build a vacuum cleaner because then they know they're in the vacuum cleaner business. And, and, and if you're in the vacuum cleaner business, you better understand how one works and all the other bits and pieces. I thought this was such a simple idea, but what a great idea. So I wrote him a note and, and I said to him, you know, I've read your book, it's very good, but I just want you to know I'm going to copy this idea of yours. And, and I was at Asda at the time. And I thought, well, what's our equivalent of a vacuum cleaner? Well, ours is the checkouts in a, in a retail. So I used to make everybody go and work on the checkouts because then you understood how, how it all worked. And so anybody who is a manager in the company, who joined the company, if you were in finance, your first day wasn't in finance, it was in a store. And, and, and then you knew because that's what you were there to do all the time. And therefore clearly, the, you know, in the mail, we deliver the mail. So the best thing to do, everybody who joins, everybody who's on, who, who joins the board and joined the board, they've all been out at four o'clock in the morning working with the postman. And in fact, what, what we get them to do is follow a letter. So they're actually out for 24 hours. So they follow a letter from the time it's being posted to the time it's being picked up to the time it's been sorted to where it's shipped around to when it ends the mail centres to when it gets delivered. Because then you understand the, 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 how the thing works. And the best way to do that is do that on day one because by the time it gets to day 101, nobody gets to do that. So, you know, it's James's idea, which I copied, so uh, credit to him. Brilliant. It must be pretty scary for the postman around the yeah. new chief executive. <laughs> well, it is. And the other thing, it's even scary because I turn up, you know, I'm one driving around, I go and talk to them wherever they are. And, you know, I get out of the car and, wear, and they go, oh, God, you know, they say, bloody hell, it's the chairman. And um, so it's, uh, but it's, the, you know, I've always believed in that, is that the best way to understand what's going on in the business is talk to the people who do the work. Um, and you know, most people who do the work happen to be the people who, in our case, deliver the mail or sort the mail or work behind the post office counters. Or, and in retail, it's the same. It's the checkout operators and it's the people who fill the shelves. So you know, n not having a relationship with them, either good or bad, but not having a piece of radar for them, never a good place to be. Yeah, because you say in your book that you spend about a day a week with your customers and then a day a week with your front end staff. Is that something you still do and that you believe in? You know, I've always worked meetings last. You know, everybody normally works their diary, puts the meetings in and fits their work around it. I put the work in and fit the meetings around it because, you, know, you know, I'm not a great believer in meetings. Um, and because they don't, you know, you know, most of them don't achieve very much. Um, so, you know, I've always done that. You know, I used to, when, when I was at Asda, I used to work once a month on the checkout. I'd go for four hours. The girls used to, because I was hopeless, so it is, you know, I could only scan at about 15, 16 items a minute, but they can scan at 30. And so I'd slow the lines down. <laughs> so they always insisted I had an L plate, which I was with honour. <laughs> but it was, um, but you know, the, you know, you learn then what, 
what stops them from being able to do a good job and it was just simple things about buttons in a different place or you know you know at certain angles or you know products that weren't you know, didn't have the right scan data on them so it's just very useful stuff and and just those you know all those business about productivity and you know, one item per minute is a huge piece of productivity so you know if I could learn a way from them that if I got something changed they could do one item a minute it was well it was a big piece of 10% more productivity so it's you know it's not done it's done for a reason which is you know to, to make sure that you know people can do their jobs and so on your first day with Dyson as, as on their board, did you have to build a vacuum cleaner? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, no. And then what happened was, and then when I sort of eventually sold Astra and, and, um, and I came out and, and people knew that I was, you know, wasn't doing very much, James just phoned me up and said, look, why don't you come on the board? And, you know, I went down there. My day one was build a vacuum cleaner, build a Dyson. Did it get any suction? <laughs> yeah, it did. I know. Well, you know, that's a, that, what a great business that is. I mean, pff, unbelievable. Bevo.com